Hey everyone, I'm Ernest Baker, Editor-in-Chief for Front Office Sports, and I want to welcome you to Second Acts, a new series where we chat with athletes that are known for their achievements in their respective sports, but are thriving in their second act after retirement. Joining me today is former professional basketball player and social media star Rex Chapman. A basketball legend at the University of Kentucky, Rex was drafted 8th overall in the 1988 NBA Draft, and he was the first official draft selection of the Charlotte Hornets franchise. The boy wonder, as he was called then, played 12 seasons in the NBA for four different teams and earned all rookie honors in his first season. Injuries plagued the latter half of Chapman's career, however, and the road that followed his retirement was a difficult one. Now Rex is well known for his lighthearted content on social media, his podcast, broadcasting career, and if that's not enough to keep him busy, he has a new weekly show on CNN's streaming platform, CNN+. Plus. So Rex, such a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you for joining the show. How's everything going on your end? All good, Ernest. I'm happy to be here. Uh, let's get down to it. You ready? I'm ready. Well, starting from the top, how did you even get into the game of basketball in the first place? Um, I came by sports pretty honest. My dad uh, played basketball when he was young and played in college, and then he played in the old ABA Um against guys like Kareem and those guys. And then I grew up watching, he, he coached after that. I grew up watching his teams play. I was just pretty much eaten up with the game of basketball. Um, I played every sport until around high school. I think I was just better at basketball, probably had more success in basketball. And that's what made me, you know, gravitate toward it. Okay, so what is that point in life, though, where it becomes, all right, I'm 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 really going to do this. I'm going to be a professional. I'm going to make it to the league. All I wanted to do growing up was I, heard, I would hear my mom and dad talk about how expensive college was. Um, and so I just had a goal of getting a scholarship somewhere, anywhere from like when I was young, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 years old, being like, oh, man, if I could. And then I was. I knew you could get a scholarship for playing basketball. You know, I was recruited by pretty much everyone. I ended up going to Kentucky. And then um, I was on the USA team that summer. And that summer was the first time I ever even thought about playing in the NBA. I hadn't, you know, I didn't think about it my whole freshman year at Kentucky that, you know, back then you just – you assume you were going to school for four years and that was it around that time. Cause I knew those guys were getting drafted. They were about to get drafted and I was going back to college for another year. And, um, so around that time I knew that other people, uh, people in the NBA thought that I could play in the NBA. So it wasn't until I was 18 or 19 before I, I thought that that was a reality. Yeah. That's a dream for a lot of people. So, what is it like once that hits you and uh, you are on that path? I had been under a really bright microscope since I was about 15 in that state. And then, you know, once uh, I got later in high school, the McDonald's game, um, then going to Kentucky and playing on, you know, national TV every weekend, um, that that prepared me pretty well for, you know, being able to, answer questions and do interviews. That's the stuff you don't think about. You know, we were just talking earlier, you know, going through all of this stuff with the interview stuff and the back and forth. It, it's That's a lot for adults to handle. And learning to do that at age 15 and 16, 17, 18, as a, learning that as a young person is really valuable, but it's overwhelming for a young brain. It can be really overwhelming. What type of support system did you have around you? You know, what type of network? Who were you able to go to to rely on, whether friends, family? Um, you know, I don't think anyone makes it this far in life and accomplishes some of the things that you have without the right people around them. So what was the story like for you? For me, I I was I was so young. Like my first year, I was the youngest player in the NBA. So they had had more reps than me. I was playing catch up. Um, in that regard, the, the people that really took care of me those first few years were, uh, Del Curry and Muggsy Bogues. Um, they were my teammates still, 
two of my best friends to this day. When you think back to all of those things and those moments early in the league where you're learning life lessons through, you know, everything that happened as you matured, what do you feel like is the most valuable lesson you took away from being an athlete? I remember uh, Julius Irving saying on an interview, if it was easy, anybody could do it. And for whatever reason, it stuck with me. Uh, that little simple phrase, every time I got tired in the weight room, every time I got whatever it was, and I saw other teammates struggling or an opponent struggling, I knew, and Monty Williams even said, put it better last year, saying, you know, everything you want in life is on the other side of hard. And that it's really true. The earlier you can realize that and realize that stuff is not going to be handed to you, um, just because you can do this or do that. Um, and I think that's a pretty good thing, uh, a pretty good mantra for, a, for an athlete. If Raina's thinking about retirement, she'll get some help from Fidelity to envision what's possible and balance risk and reward. And with a clear plan, Raina can enjoy wherever she's headed next. That's the planning effect from Fidelity. Culturally, this has come up more as a conversation is the second act is looking at life beyond your playing days. And when did that set in for you that it was time to start thinking about your second act and what did the process of preparing that look like? Uh, I retired from basketball at age 32 um, after 12 years of playing and my body was pretty beat up. Right when I retired, a uh, doctor gave me a drug called OxyContin for, for uh, an appendicitis. And I took it and within, I don't know, a very short time, I was heavily addicted to painkillers and I was on and off painkillers for about 14 years. Now, during that time, I'm sure I was in a second act that that was a second act, <laughs> but also I was working with in the NBA. I was in the NBA front office in Phoenix and in Minnesota and in Denver for a decade. In about 2014, I got in trouble. I got arrested. Um, I finally went to my third rehab and got clean from painkillers. And so over the last, I would say, seven, eight years, that's when I've been thinking about the second act. For a long time, things uh, progressively got worse and worse and worse and worse in my personal life, in my physical being um due to the painkillers coming out of it though with enough time away and trying to get my body better and my mind better continuing to do the next right thing i started to slowly it took a long time it took a couple years though i started to slowly see things change and you know, instead of a bad thing happening or expecting a bad thing to happen, all of a sudden a good thing would happen. Or I would be like, that could maybe happen. The possibility of something good happening. So it's been a process of trying to embrace, you know, all of that stuff. And, um, you know, I've been fortunate. I've had great friends and I have great, you know, people in basketball and beyond who, you know, really allowed me to well, help me to recover with as much dignity as I as I could. You know, social media has become a big part of why I think people know you and why you have a voice right now. And uh, what what's that like for you? How did that how did that amid everything else become? OK, like this is one thing that I can do that that can be valuable with everything going on. Uh, I think probably during the pandemic, you know, we were all locked down and everybody sitting there on their phones and on their computers and on their TVs nonstop all day every day because and for many of it the world did come to an end for many of us uh but what we've been through the last couple of years is traumatic i mean it is socially emotionally you know humans crave interaction and i think i was you know doing videos and trying to find heartwarming things and different, you know, just anything. Yeah. The byproduct was, you know, the following is, is so big that other people were, 
were getting something out of it too, but I was, I was doing it for me as well. I, you know, just trying to fake my way through it, find some silver lining somewhere. When does it hit after everything you've been through where it's like, okay, but this, I finally have found some level of peace or some recognition that, okay, this is what it's, this is what it is. I've learned my lesson. You know, you've hit a point where I think some people who may not be as familiar with your playing days or younger people will look and just say, hey, that guy has a great Twitter. You know, I, I see him on TV sometimes. And when do you hit the point where you say, OK, this is this is me now. This is what I do and, and feeling some level of like pride and comfort in that. One thing that I would say to younger people is when you have the opportunity, you know, if you have the opportunity to play pro sports, you better get to know as many people as you can get to know and treat them well. Treat them just like you want to be treated because, you know, whether you know it or not, they're paying attention. They are paying attention to you. Hopefully some of the relationships that I cultivated, that I, that I cultivated with others, you know, throughout my career uh, are paying off today. Um, and then most recently uh, with CNN, and doing this uh show for cnn plus you know those guys came to me a few months ago and you know wanted me to do a show for them and i i'm really excited it's something not in basketball um i'm sure there'll be some sports aspects to it but i'm just uh it's just going to be me and and people sitting down uh whether they're famous uh entertainers or athletes or everyday heroes that we see all the time on Twitter or out in the real world. Um, I'm excited to be able to sit down. I mean, what a, what a thrilling thing to sit down and talk with people like Jason Sudeikis and Ben Stiller and people that I've watched, uh, on TV and, and in movies. Um, what could be better? What does the future look like? And I will say, it seems like you're the type of person who, you know, maybe is really focused on the present and getting that Mm -hmm. right. And I think that's something that we should all do. Uh, But, you know, it's fun to think about where things are going. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how you're thinking about that for yourself. You know, what do you see for, uh, you know, for Rex in the next five, 10 years or just some goals and dreams that you want to accomplish after everything you've been through? I'm really excited about the CNN show. I think that, you know, anything that I do, I want it, I want people to enjoy it. I want to enjoy it so far. It's been, it's been really fun. It's been a crazy learning curve and I'm still learning, you know, everything from behind the camera to in front of the camera. I'm equally as excited about the team that I'm on at CNN plus with, there's so many people. I mean, there's, I could name 20 people right now that, you know, you don't do anything in your life by yourself. You just don't, not sports, not anything. And being on a team, there is nothing better. There's nothing worse when it's a bad team, but when it's good, there's nothing like being on a team and and we have a good team here. Rex, I want to thank you for joining us today and sharing your inspiring story to your second act. Uh, it was really a pleasure for you to join us, front office sports, and and talk about this. You know, it's great Happy. to have just an open conversation. So, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Have me back anytime. Happy to help.